So essentially we do imagination drills, which is what we call an eyeline drill, where you're going to stand and look at the wall, and we're going to give you something to think about, something to imagine. Whatever we give you to think about, you want to invest in it so much that it has physical manifestations, that it manifests in your body in terms of behavior, okay? Because really what you want to remind yourself with film, the audience only sees what you see. So if what you see, you physically can react to, we know it has significance. Do you guys understand that? A lot of the time we forget this because when we're in film, we're just kind of looking around, right? Like in other words, um, I'm playing with a plane where I'm getting chased by a cop and I have to see the fear when the camera focuses on me, right? If they don't see that I'm afraid and my body's reacting to what I'm afraid of, the audience doesn't think I'm afraid. Right? They just go, oh, he's just running around like a fucking like a jackass, okay? <laughs> so that's really why eyeline drill is so specific. The more that we give, the more you invest in it, again, you want to let your body respond to what you see. So the investment has can't be heady. It has to be from your heart, okay? And I always say it's like the first thing you want to think about is like if you tell a kid there's a dragon, there's a physical reaction to that, right? So, like, the, my friend's kids who now, <laughs> who now are swear there's a boogeyman, right? And the boogeyman is under the table. But it's under the table between specific hours, right? So when he walks past the table, he checks, and he looks to the left, and he does this thing where, do you know what I mean? And then once he gets past the table, he runs to his room. So there is a real physical connection to whatever that boogeyman is. And I told, told my friend, you gotta put this kid in acting. This kid's an absolute brilliant actor. Because the minute he sees it, then he turns when he gets to his room, looks under the table, there's nothing under the table. There's not a toy under the table, there's not a cat or a dog, but he looks from his room to see under the table and he'll peek through the door. That's what we want you to do with eyeline drill. <laughs> we want you to take it that far, okay? After eyeline drill also, we give you three things that correspond directly to the material that you get at the end of the drills, okay? How they correspond, you're going to have to figure out for yourself. But no, they're partly in connection to the intimacy of the scene or to the conflict of the scene. Is that clear? After we do eyeline drill, we do attention and release, which is always you want to remind yourself with film everything has to have ease, okay, as an actor. Even if your character is in tension, we have to, as an audience, see you in ease. If ease is not there, and ease meaning relaxation, right? If ease is not there, you push us out of what we're looking at. And you want to think, if I see an actor going through this shit, right, what am I going to think outside that they got an eye problem? <laughs> if I see them do this, it looks like A, they're on the toilet, B, we don't know what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? We don't have a way of seeing accessibility, okay? And that is the word of the day, accessible. You always want us as an audience to see something inside of you. If we don't see something inside of you, we cannot invest as an audience into in terms of what the moment-to-moment -moment life of the story is, okay? So there has to be all great film actors have accessibility that the minute we see them, like Tom Hanks is the best example of that, right? Tom Hanks can be not acting, and not doing anything for a character, but when we look at him, we are looking at something that seems like something is going on inside of him, okay? Which means that his ego, whatever he's worried about, goes out the window. Do you guys understand this? If I'm sitting there thinking, and you want to think in your normal life, and I'm sitting there in my head, can anyone see what's going on inside me? No. No, why not? Why not? If I'm in my head, and I'm processing information, and I'm determining something, or I'm thinking about something, how can someone not see what's going on inside me? Why not? Well, that quieted everybody. <laughs> because then you don't have so much emotion. What do you mean? Thinking. What do you mean? If you're just in your head and you're thinking you don't access the emotions. Okay, well, we could be thinking about something we're emotional about, right? We can be thinking about something we're sad about. We can be thinking about something that pisses us off. But when we just feel it, 
people can see it. When we think about it too much, what does it look like? We're thinking. Well, or it looks like we're what? Protecting mm -hmm. what, we're, what we're thinking about. Why else? Do you, you have something? No. no. Why else, guys, when we think about something, can we not see inside you? Well, you're not really present. What do you mean? I mean, it's like you're not actually here in, yeah. in the moment. Yeah, where are you? In your own world. In your own world. And the minute someone looks into your eyes when you're in your own world, what do you? What do they see? And you want to think of it with your best friend. I always said, my mother, you can see, my mother will be, I'll be talking to her and then she'll just... <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, the fuck is she thinking about? Like, and it, she'll just drift off, right? So it looks like they're absent, but it also looks like what? Don't care. They don't give a shit. Most importantly, if we see somebody thinking, we are certain because they're not present that they don't care. That there's no effect, impact, weight, gravitas to the moment or to the scene. And that's what really kills a lot of people in auditions, right? You can be in this great moment and you're thinking about the moment, right? You're thinking about the words and you're thinking about what you're supposed to do and you're thinking about how this is all going to look and this is what you look like. <laughs> and, and, the, and the casting director's sitting there going, will you focus? Like, what the fuck? And then you're like, no, I'm focused. I'm here, right? And you're just... You know what I mean? If you're looking around for something, you know, you're looking to trigger yourself, you're looking to get yourself to the right state of being, and it looks like you don't give a shit. Of course, in your mind, you're thinking because of how much you care. Do you guys get this? And this becomes the real killer for actors. If thought happens, if you are in your head, it will look like you don't give a shit. It will look like the moment is not significant. It will look like there are no stakes. And for film, every moment has stakes. Film is a series of moments, a sequence of moments. And without the character caring about what that moment is, do we as an audience care? No. No. And I'll tell you the best example, and you can really look at all the Avenger movies. We were just talking about it. All the Avenger movies... They look like they give a shit. Now they're looking at a little tennis ball with tons of makeup and a fucking skin tight suit on half of the time. They do not give a shit, but they look like they give a shit because all they're looking at is that tennis ball is a death ray, right? And that, te and that tennis ball is the world collapsing and we're gonna go save it, right? So the, the investment in getting out of your head allows accessibility but most importantly, allow stakes. Do you guys get that? And without stakes, that means there is no conflict. If it doesn't feel like life or death, every single moment you are on film, then we as an audience are not going to invest in the story. If we don't invest in the story, we lose the moments that your character is involved in the story, and therefore we're out of the movie. Okay, and you can think of any bad. Movie. I was just watching Girls Trip again. You seen this movie? Yeah, once. Oh, good, good God! Fun. Somebody had the nerve. Who what? said that? It was fun. What? For who? For, For me, me and my five girl, girls. Yeah, and that after way. some margaritas. Yeah, and that's exactly and what some we weed. did. We went and got drunk. You got drunk and, so and you went to the house. Okay. Fun. Right now, it's 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 essentially an escape escape yes. movie, right? Exactly. So you can laugh at certain moments, right? But it's not a good movie. Well, now, and I didn't say it was good. Okay, I said now, it was fun. Okay, now, here's the, here's the, this is a great call, because I'm going to talk. I, I was on set when, when we just had this debate of, are fun movies worth paying twelve fifty to go to? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> are they worth, now, they're only worth it in a group. I was but, and, say, I, and, I went with my, and I went with five yeah. girlfriends, right. and, okay. and you know, and I didn't go in there as an actor. Right. I went in there, like I said, we had dinner, we had drinks. It was part and of a girls' you, night. For girls' night, and you went to the movie. Yeah. Now, half the movie, you're talking to your friend. Absolutely. So you're not even watching the movie. Do you know what I mean? You might as well have been in a comedy club, right. hanging out with your friends. Do you get we, me? We were at the concert. We so were singing then, the songs. So the now half the, this is a movie that she enjoyed. Let's just uh -huh. start this. She didn't see half the movie, <laughs> but she enjoyed it. 
<laughs> now, how is this possible? How can we sit, and it's the same with me and Avengers. I will go see this Avengers shit, yep. and I'll be like, oh, shit, you were talking oh, shit, oh, shit. Like, I'll be talking to my friends more than I will be Watch. watching okay. the film. Okay, so film automatically means what? If I miss a moment in Girls Trip or Avengers, am I sad? No. Am I am I gonna say, hey, what happened? <laughs> no. Because when I come back, I'm gonna what? Know exactly what happened. Okay. Now, when there's a movie that you cannot talk in, that you are riveted to the screen on, what happens? Well, yes. Yeah, you get invested. Yes. That is to me how you can determine whether a movie mm. is fun, shit, or good. Do you, if you are invested, and then when you walk out of the film, if you are talking about the characters as if they are human beings, mm. like when I left, when I left Usual Suspects, I talked about Kaiser Shose as if he mm. was my friend. I was like, damn, that Kaiser Shose. Do you know what I mean? I knew, like, I, I knew him. Like, he was going to come over later. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was that invested. Now, for the audition and for you to break through the industry, you have to get people invested. Do you guys get this? You cannot just be fun and entertaining unless you have a sex tape or Dion's hip hop album. <laughs> you cannot. You have to find a way to get people invested in your moment to moment life. First, you want to remind yourself that first and foremost starts with understanding the moment to moment life of the material you're doing. Not just the overall conflict and the overall scene, but how that overall conflict and scene transpires throughout each moment. Then you want to make sure that whatever you're seeing has intimate repercussions, has an effect on you. So that when we, when a casting director or when a, when a studio exec or when anyone sees you, they see you seeing something that's significant. And then the last stage is you have to have ease. You have to make sure that your body responds to what you are seeing. Remember in film, we see first before we hear anything. We look at somebody, see what they're making assessment, or see what they're going through, and then make choices for where that character is at in the story, okay? So this is really, to me, how the, the, the significance of this class operates. So you always want to make sure that in the drills, the first drill, eyeline drill, you take as seriously as possible so you learn to train yourself and train your imagination and your intimacy and body to all link together. They should not be three separate things. They are one instrument. Imagination, intimacy, phys physicality are all one piece of your instrument. And it starts in film with your imagination. So the more you invest in it, the better off you are. After we do these drills, we then give you the script. So once you get the script, now you want to start to be specific about the moment to moment life of the scene. And in film, everything's a moment. Me grabbing a cup of coffee, me turning around, me kneeling, me rising up, somebody saying something to me that has an effect, that has an emotional effect, can also be moment to moment transitions. So what you want to be specific about when you get text is what are the moments in this scene? And how do these moments transpire to lead me to what I want and to what I am facing, okay? And the clearer you can be with this in this class, the easier it is to execute it in an audition or on set. Is that clear to everybody? So really take the time with the material today. Go through what is the moment-to-moment -moment life that transpires, how does it connect to what we did in the eyeline drill, and let me make a choice of what I want and what I am up against, okay? Because you always get to know conflict through what you want. So whatever the character wants, that is what they're facing. Do you guys get that? So if I want love, normally, more than likely, I am being rejected, I am being pushed aside, okay? And invest each step of the way, okay? 
So the first thing again, eyeline drill. Omar's gonna line you up. We're gonna do that, then we're gonna do tension release without anyone passing out today. No one passed out when I was no, going? No, man, we did it real quick. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll bring you in, we'll give you the script. You guys have as long as you need to prepare. You can prepare in the theater. Make sure you're specific with the moments. Then we will call you in, one by one. Once we call you in, you are on a professional set. Then we will shoot, you'll get three takes. Then we'll bring people. Bring the whole class after each person, after all of us shoot, and then we critique. Oh, there's a question. Yeah. Uh, the question is, um, it's easier to do it on set than it is on an audition. Why is that? Yeah, well, because on set you got the job. Shit, you ain't worried about having the job. Okay. I mean, the other thing you want to remind yourself is by the time you get to set, your preparation is done. You know, and at least then you have enough around you. Right? You have enough production design around you, you have a, a camera around you who's and a director who's specifically leading you through, hopefully, <laughs> leading you through what you want to see, so it becomes a lot easier. It's tougher to do it in the audition because you're not being directed. Wouldn't it be great if you had like a audition director? Yes. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like if so a casting director was actually your audition director? Do you know, this is what I'm looking for, oh. you know, right? and they take you through, but you don't. So it becomes on you. But the best understanding is the clearer your preparation is, the more investment you have in text, the more clarity you have in the moment-to-moment -moment life, the easier the audition becomes. The more unclear or general you are with the material you have for the audition, the more difficult the audition execution is. And that is why I tell people, when you get sides, very first thing, especially for television and film, you better be clear on the moment-to-moment -moment life that's happening throughout the scene. Because I'd rather you have that clarity in telling the story than the depth of character. Because at least then we can see you understand how to attack story. We understand how to attack material. You, we're not gonna, you're not gonna neglect an element of story that you might have thought you could bring as character depth or intimacy, you're gonna make sure that that story is told. And for television, that's absolutely critical. We have to see the story that's told on the page because it connects to the larger story for the character's arc. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah, I say thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's why it should come to the script breakdown, right? <laughs> that's why it should come to the script <laughs> breakdown. But that's also why you should come to class. I mean, I always feel this class is almost as as relevant as, as script breakdown. breakdown. But I, you I would think, know more. Yeah, I think script breakdown helps you with everything, right? right? So I think script breakdown is probably more really? important. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. then you know why you're saying what you're saying or what you're seeing or in connection to what you're saying. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? that's true too. I mean, the real interesting element, guys, is when you get film scripts, People think, okay, well, you know, it, it, you got to have some level of process of, or technique of how to approach a film script. It's very specific because the way in which a film script is written, it doesn't necessarily give you tons and tons of detail. Right. You have to find how the moments in the, in the actual scene can inspire details for your character. And that's a real trick, you know, and that takes a lot of doing. So there's a lot of times like when, when you're on set, where you'll have a director aid you in, hey, look, this detail will lead you to understanding this element of who you're playing. That you have to do in auditions without any support. And that's a real tough thing. And that, you know, I, I always tell people that's why the audition process, you want to have a different technique than you do for when, after you book the job. You want a different way of approaching audition material than you should when you book it, when, you, when you're approaching character. And I think the other element to recognize is there's a different understanding of the format of film and television than there is of theater. And the way in which you approach film and television auditions should be different than the way in which you approach theatrical. So that's why I think Omar is right to a certain degree. Any level of script breakdown, text analysis that can lead you to clarifying three huge things, conflict, what you want, and a level of intimacy is critical. If you don't have those three things, more than likely you're not going to get somebody to invest in you when they watch you in an audition tape, right? If at least we see a conflict, at least we see a level of intimacy, and at least we see something that you want, 
your moment-to-moment -moment life translates through the camera and into execs and studio people and directors, and that's what they want to invest in you from. If those three things aren't there, it's really tough to determine if you're right for the part or if you're better than any other person who has more credits, has who's got a name, da 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 da, -da. And remember, this is a star mania driven industry right now. So the way you break through that is by being brilliant. It's the only way to break through it. And the way you get brilliant is by working at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, there's no other way. You just have to keep practicing it and keep your discipline about your learning of, learning of it and especially your discipline with text. So is that clear to everybody? Really take the time today. You guys might have more time than you think before we call you up for each text meta for, uh, to shoot. So take all the time we give you and go through the material. When you get in here, Omar's going to be your director. So if you have questions, you want to make sure your questions about are about what you're shooting. Do you know what I mean? Not necessarily about what you prepare. No director wants to hear, hey, I don't know my need. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Hey, I don't know my tragic flaw. They're going to look at you like, just pick up the fucking coffee and sit back down. I don't care <laughs> about this level of... Do you know what I mean? So you have to be very specific about your questions in connection to the scene you are shooting. Okay? Not to your general interpretation of character. On television, you have no time. Really. You do... Maybe it's Netflix now, I hear is doing five days an episode. Whoa, That's wow. insanely fast, guys, for an hour episode to do in five days. So you know, Friends was a multi-camera comedy that shot in five days. They're now doing one-hour episodes in a five-day shoot. That is extremely fast. So that means you might get possibly two takes per camera setup for each shot. That means you are moving at lightning Pace. That's very, very fast. Some of the big shows, like um, the big, like FBI, shoot seven days now. Blue Buds brought it back down to five days too. Wow. So because they're trying to pump out more and more material. Now you should also be aware there are 96 new pilots going to be shot from now until uh, April or May of next year. So if you have representation, get on them. Start bugging them. I was going to ask you, have you talked to... I was just there. You're just there now. Good. Because really, to me, you guys got to find a way to start getting in on a very low level so you can build up your credits by the middle of next year. Okay? Because there's just so much shit shooting. They're shooting it so fast. There's so many different exhibition outlets. So you guys have to really be on it as much as possible and be aware of story, story, story. So that when you get in there, at least they can say you're a pro. And I think this class is the best class for story. Yeah, it is. It, it hands down is. Yeah. Because even, I don't know, has everyone done Extra Actor here? Yeah. Extra Actor is good for story, but Extra Actor is more important than trying to understand and connect the material to yourself. This, we rather you have story than anything else because without story we don't see the arc of the scene and if we don't see the arc of the scene in we film don't. we can't use the shot is that clear?